Hello everyone, welcome to our series presented to you by Bioinformatics for All. In this video, we will talk about matrices. According to the R series timeline I showed you last video, I was supposed to talk about matrices and lists. But I decided to divide them into two separate videos so we can discuss them in details. In the last video, you learned the basic data structures in R. Now let's go and see how data structures are classified. So data structure are classified either according to their dimensions. So we have one dimension, two dimension, and multi-dimension. Or they can be classified according to their structure types. So we have homogeneous and heterogeneous data structure. Homogeneous data structure can only store a single type of data, such as numeric, logical, and character. But heterogeneous data structure can store more than one type of data at the same time. So let's see our example here and how they are related to their data structure. As I explained in the last video, scalar, vector, matrix, and array can only accept single data type. For example, if we have a, a car or a minivan or a bus, they only accept human, animals, or robot. For example, a minivan cannot accept a motorcycle in it or a, uh, a car in it. Same goes for the array. Array cannot uh, accept a minivan to go inside of it. So these type of data structure, they only accept numeric, logical, and character. On the other hand, list stores data in linear order, and it can store data of different type. For example, list can store numeric, can store logical and character. So as you can see in picture here, we can list can be like a trailer. A trailer can have a human, an animal and robot in front seat, and it, it can have car, motorcycle, minivan at the back. So in scientific words, list can store numeric, logical, character. Also it can store vectors, matrix, and sometimes even it can store a list. So a trailer can carry a trailer. What about data frame or tables? So data frame, they are similar to list. They accept heterogeneous uh, data type, but also they are two dimensional. So they can accept two cars next to each other parking. So we have a, here a ferry boat. So let's go to matrices. Matrix is a vector with a two-dimensional data, and it has rows and columns. All the values in the matrix have to be the same type, homogeneous data type. These are the functions and the arguments needed to create, name, or modify a matrix. We will use all of them in this video. So let's see how we can create a matrix. To create a matrix, we need to use the matrix function. Inside round brackets we need to write our numbers we need to write also the number of the rows after the comma another comma and a number of the columns and we need to close the round brackets so this is the basic matrix i want you to keep in mind that generally you write the number of the rows first then you write the number of the columns so if you want to create modify or call a number in a matrix just keep it in your mind to write the numbers of the rows and the number of the columns we have two options Either you can use the matrix argument n row stands for number of the rows or n call stands for the number of the column as you can see here in this example or you can just write two and three without using the n row and n call arguments like this example here. To create a matrix, you either need to specify the number of the rows or the number of the columns or both. So in this example, we specified the number of the rows by setting the rows argument to 2. And we ask R to take our values from 1 to 6. So we have six numbers. R will divide the numbers into two rows. Then R will automatically set the column number to 3. Because in matrix, the number of the input should be equal to the number of the matrix element. In the first example here, you see we used n row argument. In the second example here, we just wrote 2. Same goes if you want to specify the numbers of the columns. Here I want to point something out. If you don't want to write the n call argument, so you just want to write the number of the column immediately, you have to keep in mind you need to, you need to keep this comma. 
So R will understand you are asking a uh, number of the columns. If you don't put this comma, R will always understand you are asking number of the rows. So let's go to R Studio and try this out. When you uh, put the cursor on the line, instead of uh, pressing Control Enter, you can just press Run here and R will run it for you. And you don't need to go and point it out. You just keep run. And there's here the let's run the other one. It's still the same. Again, same. Again, the same. We created six matrices where we specify the number of the rows and the number of the column by using the n row and n call arguments. Here, we didn't uh, use the n row and n call arguments, but we specify the number of the rows and the number of the columns by just writing the numbers. Here, we specify only the number of the rows with the argument, here without the argument. Here, we specify the number of the column with the argument here without the argument so let's go back by row equal true it's a logical that tells the matrix to arrange the numbers by rows the default setting in r fills the matrix by columns which is by rows equal false so r fills the matrix column by column if you want to fill the matrix row by row you need to use the argument by row equal true so if you don't use the by row argument in your command r will automatically use the default setting but if you add by row equal true inside your matrix command r will distribute your data row by row so let's go to r studio and try it exercise two here i wrote the command by row equal false, which I am saying use the default setting. So I'm gonna press run. And as you can see, it uh, distributed my numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here, let's run this. And you can see distributed row by row, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you want to name your columns and your rows at the same time, dime names is the great function to do that for you. In this exercise, we will create a spreadsheet for chemistry test scores that includes written and practical. For four students, we will ask R to generate the test scores randomly. The student's name will be Mary, Lisa, Michael, and John. We will use runIf function and the floor function in this exercise. Runif is a function that generates random numbers for you. So let's go to R Studio and try, for example, here. We want to ask R to generate us 10 num random numbers. So we will run. And as you can see, R generated 10 random numbers. So for each student, we need to assign two values, one for the theory part and one for practical. We have four students, so we need eight values. And the maximum score for each test is 50. First, we will assign our matrix to chemistry exam. So first, we will use the matrix function to create a matrix for us. The floor function, this function will help us to avoid decimal numbers. Then we will use the run if this function will generate for us random numbers. And eight is our input values and max 15 is each value should not be more than 50. And we close the bracket for run if and close the bracket for floor. And then we ask R to distribute our data into four rows. So let's go to R Studio and first create this matrix. So now we are running this. And as you can see here, we have four rows two columns. We have four students. Each student uh, has one uh, test score for theory and one test score for practical. So to name our uh, rows and the columns at the same time, we will need to use the dime names function. So I don't want you to worry about this command because it has list function, which we will discuss later on in our uh, next videos. So now let's let's use the dime names function 
put our matrix inside the fit and assign list to our matrix, which contain the names of our students and the theory and practical exam. So let's go to our studio. So here you can see we are going to give name names to our columns and uh, to our rows here. Now it printed out our student's name and theory and practical exam. So we prepared it, but the student's office called and asked why didn't we write the total score in our score list. And they asked us to add a new student score. It's Sam, theory, he got in theory 38 and in practical 20. So now what we need to do is we already have a matrix. So we need to add one column and one uh, row, a column for the total score and a row for the new students and name them. So here this function will help uh, us to do this. We will use R bind, which a function that can add a row to your matrix. C bind, it can add a column to your matrix. Row name, it can name your row and call names, it names your column. So let's go to the exercise four and try to add Sam's score to the list. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to assign our matrix to a new matrix. So this is our old matrix chemistry exam. It has the old student scores. So we are going to take this and we are going to uh, add some score to it between brackets and ask our bind to add this row to this old matrix and create our new matrix updated score. And here we are uh, asking R to print our updated score. So let's go to R. Here we are going to create our new matrix. So let's run this command. And as you can see, our bind added a new row which has Sam's scores. So now we added some scores. What we need to do is we need to name that row. What we need to do is we need to take the updated score matrix and use the row named function. And we are asking R to add Sam name to the fifth to the fifth row. So let's go to R. So let's run it. And as you can see, now we have updated score with the Sam name in it. So now we are done with uh, Sam's scores. We need to add a new column and write the total score in it. So what we need to do is we need to use the row sums function to sum each row and get us the total. And instead of doing it manually, R can do it for you. So here we are creating a new vector for our total score. So our, we will name our vector total score. Uh, in this vector, we will uh, use the row sums function. So here we will put our updated score matrix and what row sum do for us, it will sum up each row and give us the total number. So let's go to R. Here we have this total score vector. So let's run it. And as you can see here, 45, 68, so it's giving us the total score for each student. We have a, a vector which contains the total score of each student. So let's add that column to our command. Here we will use the C bind. So now we are assigning to a new matrix. Here we are using the updated scores, which we added Sam's result to it. We are asking the C bind to take the total score that we just created and add it to the updated score which has Sam's scores in it and print it. So let's go to R and here we have the final version. This is our new matrix and C bind will combine this line, the new total score we just created to our updated scores. So let's run it. And as you can see here, we have third column is the sum of each students. To name the new column, we need to use the call names function. So we will use the call names function. We will put our final version matrix and we are asking the function to add a total as a name to the third column. So we go here 
and we run it and as you can see now this is our final matrix it's updated it has sam's scores and it has the total score for each student i prepared additional exercises for you so you can try it by yourself i it's they are all in the description so try them out so that's it for me today thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to my channel